was gassing up on the way here, and this kid was parked next to me, a little hot rod, and he's wearing a Combsy shirt. And I look over at him, and I go, hey, man. And I point at his shirt, and I give him the thumbs up, and he goes, it's my uncle. And I go, huh? <laughs> and I go, man, I like your shirt. And he goes, he's my uncle. And then he pulled out a <laughs> and gun. I, and I, <laughs> I said, man, he sure is good. He goes, I haven't seen him in a while. And so I go, well, he's playing at the colony tonight with oh, Amber Watson. My. And the kid goes, I'm off work. I said, go see your uncle. So here on the Tulsa Podcast, <laughs> yeah. we're our uniting family. We're yes. uniting <laughs> families, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yes. The community it really is. to come together. Oh, it is a together. grassroots <laughs> operation. <laughs> so comes. Comsy, Chris, Chris, we saw your nephew, and he's looking great. So that's all I wanted to say about him. That's all I wanted to say. Don't disrespect me coming up in here with your family. That's the whole point. <laughs> Mr. Eric here, and this is my co-host Oscar Pedron, and this is the Tulsa Sound Podcast. We are so glad to be with you this week. Boy, this has been a crazy week. We had the eclipse just Ooh. yesterday, and that was spectacular. That was fantastic, Mr. Eric. Wasn't that a life-changing event? Everybody everybody in the peanut gallery, of course, you all got to see the eclipse yesterday. We set up our um, our special Tulsa Sound podcast observation deck, and uh, we will actually be posting a video that you can visit on YouTube, and it will uh, show you our the results of our beautiful photographic experience with the eclipse. I'm just glad I got to see it. Yeah, we were going to cool. we were going to drive down to uh, Emory, Texas, and then as it turned out that the forecast um, for down there was was clouded out, so we just decided to stay here in good old Tulsa. Yeah, down by the riverside, down by the yeah. riverside, and uh, so anyway, well, how have you been this week? It's been a busy week, Mr. Eric. It has? Lots going on You've in been the Tulsa busy? Sound Music scene. Oh, we've got lots of events at the convention center. Yep. We've got lots of events at the BOK Center. Yep. Of course, our local music scene is popping. You know it. It is just, it's springtime, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody is getting their getting their, their act together, so yeah. to speak. So we've got a lot to talk it's about this time. episode. We're going to bring you some news about Mayfest during this episode. We're yeah, going to bring Mayfest. you some news about the ZZ Top concert. ZZ Top coming, coming to in, the coming Tulsa Theater. In. Uh, soon and we just got so many things to touch on. Well, let's jump right let's in. Let's get right into it, guys. Okay, we're so glad you're here with us on the Tulsa Sound, Sound Podcast. Podcast. We want to thank you for tuning in. Thanks. Thank we you. know that you're busy and we know you've got lives. Hey, I have an announcement. Yes. Mr. Eric, you may now listen to the Tulsa Sound Podcast on Spotify. Oh my God! Yes, that yes. is incredible, ladies and gentlemen. Spotify. Whatever that means. No. Um, well, see, I'm. I'm sort of media uh, uh, deficient, Oscar, so that's a good thing, right? Yes, yes. Spotify, you know, uh, it's a great platform, and yeah. it, we are proud to be part of Spotify's family. Check us out on Spotify. You can listen to us while you're driving down the road. That's amazing. Follow that's and rate. Follow and rate. Follow and rate? Follow and rate us. Oh, with a T. Okay, boy. I <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Well, anyway, well, super. That's that's great news. We are growing. We're growing because of y'all. Yes, we're we growing want to thank the viewers for you watching. guys watch us. You guys we know that you are Tulsa Sound music fans. We know that you're in the Tulsa area and the surrounding areas. We want to say hi to our fans in the Dutch Netherlands, hi. in Canada. We want to say hi to our friends in Australia. Oh, Thanks for tuning oh, oh, in. We do have fun. That's right, Mike. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful, you know, and that's a cool thing about the the way things are today. Well, we have a follower from Nashville. Nashville, ladies and gentlemen. Nashville. Nashville. Hello, Nashville. They call it Music hey, City. Nashville, we see you out there, Nashville. Bum, bum, bum. We want you to see us, Nashville. Yeah, and Nashville. That's one of the reasons we do the show. That's right, because who knows, in a few years, it might be the Nashville Sound Podcast. I... <laughs> uh, 
now. Got well, a lot anyway. going on. There's there's big events all over and big big stuff. Well, and here in a, a segment here shortly, uh, we're going to have Britt in. She's going to bring us all of the upcoming dates in town. Yes, and uh, that's another reason why we're trying to get this show. Uh, as weekly as we can because we realize that a lot of the dates and stuff that we're giving for shows are timely. And it, what how stupid is it if we give out dates and then we, we don't get out there on YouTube fast enough for you guys to get the information. So, um, yeah, we have a couple of things coming up. I know that one of the things that uh, we're kind of wanting to uh, talk about tonight is an upcoming show. And you're going to have to open up my uh, script oh, yeah. for me because the little script machine just closed down there. But, um, Oscar, why don't you... Um, well, I'll tell you what, um, we, it, it is an upcoming show. What's the date of this Lance Rourke show? Uh, he's going to be playing in Tahlequah at the Red Fern That's Festival. That's right. And coming up real soon, Brittany Bear will tell you the date she's, of that Yeah, show. she's got a lot of the information so on it. So stick with uh, us, stick tuned. There's a lot of information coming at you on this podcast. Yeah. You guys are going to want to take notes at home. That way you don't miss any of the action. The fact we have is, so much if, to talk about. if you haven't heard of Lance Rourke it, Lance yet, Rourke. It's time, wow. it's, it's time to get your... Head out of the sand, That's buddy. That's right. That's and start right. paying some attention here. This, so this we're going to talk in, about Lance Rourke a little bit. Yeah, I've, I've already started that, actually. You know, he it, recently played the Ryman Auditorium. That's amazing. You that know. is a fantastic achievement. That's yeah, amazing. For anybody from our Tall Sound Music scene, we want to applaud you, Lance Rourke, for getting out there and taking those guys with you. You know, Cooper Wall was on that gig. It's a great thing. And we want to celebrate Lance Rourke tonight by just uh, telling you a little bit about him. Yeah, his up-and-coming singer, songwriter, and guitarist is quickly rising through the ranks of not only the Tulsa Sound music scene and Red Dirt Oklahoma scene, but also he's leaving a trail of awestruck fans in his wake. Man, I'm telling you what, born in Gore, Oklahoma, Rourke's music reflects the beauty and struggle of everyday life with lyrics that cut to the core and melodies that tug at the heartstrings. His live performances are nothing short of mesmerizing with uh, intricate guitar solos that weave together with uh, hard driving backbeats and captivating uh, a captivating voice to create an unforgettable experience, Mr. Eric. You know, Oscar, one of Rourke's defining characteristics is his his ability to blend country twang and rock and roll, breaking down boundaries and bringing a fresh and innovative sound to the music industry. His forthcoming EP, that's right, Better Man is the name of that EP, and uh, this is set to drop out on March 31st, 22. So it's actually out it's now. Out. It's, it's out, out now. Thank you, crowd. Pick up a copy of Better Man by Lance Work. Yeah, this features collaborations and he co writes with some of the biggest names in the business R.C. Edwards, Hank Early of Turnpike Tribadours. Uh, the record huge is Huge names, guys. Yeah, huge, huge. huge. They're huge names. The record is a master class in storytelling, delivering a mix of emotion and textures that draw you in with every note. Safe That's I true. say. Safe I say. That's true. So if you're a fan of of live music, you owe it to yourself to catch Lance Rourke in action. His performances are electrifying with an infectious energy that spreads through the crowd and keeps you on edge on the edge of your seat. And with management and booking handled by industry heavyweights like John Folk uh -oh. at uh, WME and uh, Pergo at TMWRK, mm. and, uh, who also handled the Turnpike Troopers, and Phillips can and rest and assured and PQR. that uh, Lance Work is a talent that's going places. Simmons over there. So at don't XYZ. sleep on Lance Work. If you haven't heard Lance Work yet, check out some Lance Work. I uh, say it's time to start paying attention to Lance Work. That's what I say. Absolutely. He's a new face on the scene. But he's already making waves with his captivating voice, hard-driving backbeats, uh, down-to-home lyrics. Whether you're a diehard fan of country rock or bluegrass, Rourke's music has something for everyone. Yeah, so mark your calendars for his tour dates. Get ready to experience the rise of one of the most exciting new talents on the Tulsa Sound music scene. And that's Lance Rourke, guys. Lance Rourke? So we've had a little bit of video showing here. Uh, 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 we're, are we going to show the video, Mr. Director? We're going to show right. that video. We're going to show you a Lance Work video at the Bluegrass Brunch uh, uh, featuring Jolly Mullinex and the rest of the Muppets down there uh, at the Bluegrass Brunch at the Mercury Lounge on Sundays. So, okay, uh, let's watch that here video. Here comes some Lance Rourke, guys. And then we'll be right back. This is called Oklahoma Blacktop by Lance Rourke. Lance just released his album, his debut album, yesterday. Check it out. Go, go find it on Spotify. We're going to do a couple songs off that one right now. Let's do Oklahoma Blacktop. All right. Thank you. 
like a girl stations that was on AM and FM, which was unusual. Well, KBOO did it, though. They started out on AM. They are a clear channel station. A clear channel radio stations at night were designated by the FCC as stations where nobody else was on that frequency. And so they could crank it up at night. And back in the 50s and 60s, KVOO, KVOO you could listen to KVOO once you came over the top of the Sierras once you got to once you got to you could hear it once once you got out of LA and into the basin you could get KVOO all the way to Tennessee yeah and they could hear uh, Canada to Mexico they could hear KVOO in you know southern California were all, like Eric said, all the way out in Tennessee, and they were all listening to Tulsa radio back mm -hmm. back when. It was a it was a trucker station, trucker watt overnight station, radio, which was totally and, illegal. It shouldn't have been more than fifty thousand, but they had a hundred. Oh no no no, watts. that that was perfectly legal. They were a clear channel station. 
which means that during the daytime, they were limited to a 50,000-watt operation. Now, do you mean Clear Channel Corporation? No, just... no. Clear Channel Corporation is just a name. Right, right, right. Clear right. Channel is a radio term, which means that this there are... This is all are... good stuff for the show. We should be here. I, I, I just took a note. I'm recording. So... Okay. Oh. Clear Channel. Well, a Clear Channel station is a station that the FCC specifically says... Nobody's going to be on your frequency at night. You can open up your power all the way. But in the case of a national emergency, you're one of our radio stations. Yeah. So Merle Haggard is famous for telling stories about being able to listen to uh, KVOO uh, in Southern California yeah. when he was in a young man. In Bakersfield. Well, because there, you see, once you cross over, you, you ever been down there near Bakersfield? Never been okay, to California. So I won't go. It's uh, it's real hilly, but there's no trees, but it's all these big hills. So once you get out of that basin, it's it's wide open all the way across Arizona, all the way across New Mexico, because it's, it's below the. So Rockies. in the Ken Burns uh, country music documentary, they did an extensive segment on KVOO. KVOO. Uh, so for anybody out it's there big watching, it's big country radio. Listen, KVOO. Check out the Ken Burns documentary the about country music. Tulsa's mentioned heavily. Kane's Ballroom is mentioned. So it's a proud thing for us. There you uh, go. Check out the Ken Burns doc. When we were kids. You know, we would go to. My dad said, let's get ice cream. So we'd go to Brahms and we'd get our ice cream cones. And then we'd drive out 11th Street out to buy the old KVOO mm -hmm. transmitter. Oh, yeah. and it, it's not there now, but they used to have this kind of this stucco building. Yeah. And in the doors, you could see all the red and blue lights of the machinery. Oh, that was the coolest thing to me as a kid. That's why I do this. Everybody, we're back at the Tulsa Sound Podcast. And we're so glad you're still with us here. So, uh, gonna, uh, hey, Oscar. Hey, Mr. Eric. Hey, so, um, what, we got a new segment? We, we do new... have a new segment. It's called The Set List. The Set List, yeah. And, yeah, featuring Brittany Bear. And she, Britt's going to tell us about uh, Tulsa's live music report. Well, here we go. Absolutely. Hi, Britt. Welcome hey, to, Britt. Welcome to the show you're again. Here with us. Yeah, happy Absolutely. to be back. <laughs> and uh, got a lot of good things going on for April and May. A lot of, like, 420 shows, uh, oh. Earth Day shows. Oh. Um, should I just get there? All right, yeah. <laughs> 420 show. I know where I'm going to be. All right. <laughs> Uh, Saturday at Mercury Lounge, got Daisy Chain with Big Mogus, who was our guest the last the big time. Big Mogus. The big Mogus. Hey, Mike. Mm -hmm. I love him. That'll he's, be Saturday, April 13th. He's crazy. He's totally out of his mind. <laughs> Daisy and Cody with Carl Carbonell at the Mercury Lounge, 7 p.m. Friday, April 26th. Go out and see Daisy and Cody, guys. Yeah, they, that's a good time. You know, they perform all over the place. They play a lot of the galas and stuff, a lot of uh, fundraiser galas around town. Yes, absolutely. And I believe they're at Crow, Crow Creek this month as well. So go oh. check out Daisy. And Cody. All right, and then at the Colony Casanova, that'll be Friday, April 12th, uh, Andrew's 8 Show 9, and that's uh, Fulton's Going Away Party, and uh, he used to be an ATF, and he's a drummer around town, and he's, he'll be leaving for school, so we're all celebrating that in Glassside Gremlins, and that's a project for Michael Campa. Nice. There you go. Um, yeah, and then uh, this week at Thelma's, we have, I think this might be our first time having, like, every night of the week music. Wow. It might have happened once before, but yeah, so got a lot of stuff happening at Ten Whiskers, back for their Monday residency. Big things going on at Thelma's Peach, guys. <laughs> Please go down there and check out Thelma's. Yeah, and then Tuesday, Knipple's back for Knipple, their residency. Knipple, we love Knipple. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Wednesday, we got Tom Skinner's Science Project, and that's at uh, see, doors at six. Show at six thirty. And now, then, who all has been in the science project lately? And currently in the science project, it's uh, Don Morris, Rick Gomez, Gene Williams, Brad James, and Chris Bell. And so, Man, I love some Don Morris. If I could grow up to be like anybody, it'd be Don Morris. If you yeah. could grow up, it, that'd could be grow amazing up. <laughs> right there by itself. You know. And they're also incredible. They'll do like Tom Skinner songs and their original songs and a lot of 60s, 70s covers. Yeah, has Brad James been sitting in with those boys down um, there? Yeah, he, yeah, he's been there every single Wednesday, actually. All right. Go out and see Brad James. <laughs> uh, he's one of the old school guys, and he won't disappoint you. Check him mm -hmm. out. He plays slide guitar, and he's fantastic. If you haven't seen Brad James, go out and see Brad James. <laughs> yeah, and then we actually have a late night show um, Wednesday, which... Uh, 
yeah, it'll be a JW Francis and Paul Cherry. And then Thursday, Josh Westbrook and the Starmadillos. And then uh, that'll be Thursday and Friday. We have a Snakes. Jamie Cano happy hour <laughs> with the, and then the late show is Patty Steele, Julia Othmer and Sophia Kareen. And now, you just mentioned one of my favorite people. Patty Steele. <laughs> Patty Steele is moving to Tulsa. She has moved to Tulsa, right? Is that right? Uh, yeah, this heard? will be her first show as a resident in Tulsa. And wow. if you haven't seen her at Bluegrass Brunch and playing at her sh- own shows, The Patty Colony. Steele, welcome to Tulsa. <laughs> I told you when you moved here, I'd take you to breakfast. Girl, that invitation is still on. So let's get together. Let's all go get some breakfast. Patty Steele, welcome to Tulsa. Welcome. Welcome, welcome Patty. To welcome. Tulsa. And Tulsa. so we're checking out because she, like, she'll do a clarinet and vocals and like play the spoons and it's just like so captivating and she's oh. like very uh she just has such a unique like woodwind and percussion <laughs> she's she's great she <laughs> she is captivating to watch and, and just an excellent musician all the way around and can sing like a bird <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, let's see. Saturday we got um, Hey Judy, The Beaten Daylights, and Fabulous Minks, and so it'll be really fun. More of like a hard rock night, so I'm excited for that. And then Sunday we've got Bob Wiles and Cowboy Jones. Ooh, that's good stuff there. Go out and see some Red Dirt music uh, at Thelma's with Bob Wiles mm-hmm. and Cowboy Jones. Of course, Anthony Pierce plays mm-hmm. with uh, Bob in in that project. So please go out and support them. The old guys are great. They're better <laughs> than they've ever been. Cleaner than they've ever been. Old go guys are great. Them. Old people are great. You know, they promised to take their Geritol and show up on time. <laughs> and the Anthony Pierce Trio played Saturday afternoon, and it was awesome. It was like their, his first time with that uh, lineup. So Was tar- mm. Todd Harkreader in that trio? I don't think awesome. so. It was like uh, Ian Johnson on drums. All right. And, uh, yeah, and then let's we'll see what we got next. Yeah, John Fulbright will be at Mayfest, one of the headliners. John Mayfest. Guys, it's a free show. Oh, you know, I got some information on Mayfest this week. Hey, tell us, Mr. Eric. What's going on with Mayfest? The National Weather Service is going to be setting up an information tent at at Mayfest this year. They're going to bring all of their uh, storm prediction equipment and stuff because they want to, you know, because during Mayfest, you're absolutely guaranteed every single year to get violent weather. So they want to be able to be right in the heart of the tornado when it... It rains every year at Mayfest. Every That's year. part of the fun it of Mayfest. It has tornadoes every year at Mayfest. Every Fest. year, and we straight want to like wish them well at 600 Mayfest. 600 mile an hour straight line winds. It's like being on Jupiter, I now swear listen, to God. Hanson started out playing at Mayfest, so well, from Mayfest, that, great things grow. There don't, you go. Don't underestimate Mayfest or the artists that play there. Go out to Mayfest. Support these artists. Support our, our artists that will be selling paintings and photography yes, out yes. there. Of course, the pottery people, the jewelry people will all be out Just there. Just because they got rid of Main Mall doesn't mean they got rid of Mayfest. That's right. Mayfest is better than ever. So please go out and, and support Tulsa's Mayfest. By the way, also, I, I, I'm starting to work on a thing. Bring back Main Mall. No cars drive up and down there. Let's let's bring that let's back. Let's bring back the Main Mall. Let's the bring Mayfest. back Main Mall. Yeah. Yeah. Tulsa. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Where is that? So this well, right, Main right Street. downtown. Main, Main Street. Street between 3rd and 6th used to be closed. No cars. And no cars. And every day there was live entertainment at the fountain where that, that, that weird like pool oh. thing is in the they street. They used to do lunchtime shows there. Yeah. He was a Sean really Williams happy. performed there once. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Williams. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But uh, yeah, that would be fun. But anyway, so we diverge. We digress. <laughs> we digress. Some uh, some folks called the Bad Omens are coming to the uh, Brady, the Tulsa Theater, on April 30th. Oh, they look like psychedelic year, kung fu artists. Mm-hmm. So check out Bad Omen. And yeah. next, here's the first of the 420 shows is at the Colony uh, with Crush DeVille and Klondike 5. So. Ooh, some good, good. Uh, Hillbilly style yeah. bluegrass out of Klondike Five, so yeah. check those. Kids That's jug out. music for yeah. you, boy. It is. Yeah. They're 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 quite authentic. And coming up, uh, Park Grove May Day Festival. If you don't know about Park Grove, they're a community center on the west side, and it's an old church there. I think off Forty First Street. And um, yeah, they usually have uh, music like Sundays, and like have a Sunday like service where the artists will play some music and then just kind of talk about like their story or you know kind of their philosophies and all that. And so we're having a fundraiser, 
and uh, we have the Last Mornings of Fall. They're from Arkansas. Desi and Cody from Tulsa. Michael Stanton and the Shade from Missouri. The Dead Gummets, uh, local, kind of Grateful Dead, like cover band. They got a lot of originals too. And then a uh, Folksway and some locals. Now, what else is going to be going on out there that day? <laughs> now you're telling me they got a church over in West Tulsa. It's like a music church. <laughs> yeah, basically, it Some really is. And yeah. yeah, a lot of like like Grateful Dead like crowd kind of like hangs out there. And Interesting. Have, uh, yeah, we'll have like fundraisers, and I'll sell. Yeah, basically, what's happening is I'm selling my Indian tacos. All right, oh, so yeah. well. hey, Britt Bear will be selling Indian tacos on May Day at Park Grove, and I expect everyone out there watching to swing by, pick up some of these fantastic Indian tacos. Yep, and it's with my great grandma's recipe, and I usually have my family like helping wow. me out, and I've done like two events there before. So, so do you make your own fry bread? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Yep. All right. Okay. The recipe, yep. All right. You know, yeah, I've got time, it all planned out. We went to Tahlequah <laughs> one time, and we could find no fry fry bread in that town. <laughs> well, it's a special occasion. I understand. I understand. I'll let them off this time. So Park Grove, again, get out there and, and support the kids at Park yeah. Grove. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. Again, go out and see Brittany Bear on May Day. She'll be selling Indian tacos. Yeah, it's all ages. There's activities like for everybody. Great family event. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, and check them out. They got workshops going through the week. So, And next up, uh, with The Colony, every Tuesday in April, Amber Watson's a female featured artist. Now, Amber Watson and Chris Combs are there tonight while we're shooting this show. So as we speak, uh, Combsy and Amber Watson are doing they their are thing taking, down at The Colony. Ladies and gentlemen, they're taking the stage That's right fabulous, now. That's actually, guys. <laughs> they're taking the stage right now. <laughs> And then every other Tuesday at the first shop, Song Tennis with R.R. Williams and Carl Carbonell, 8 to 11. Look how big their heads are. It's incredible. <laughs> they must be really smart guys. Go out and see Carl Carbonell. Of course, Carl Carbonell with the Salty Dogs, and he's a good friend of Cole Siegel's. Uh, shout out, Cole Siegel. Hey, buddy. Shout out. Shout out. About you. We love you. <laughs> And then Saturday, April 20th at the Guthrie Green. This is really exciting, the Earth Day celebration. There's the Red Dirt Rangers and a Ken Pomeroy band. She's a Cherokee songwriter. And the Mother Earth String Band and Choir, which they're incredible. It's like a collective of women, like uh, string artists. And I believe my friend Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Strong, she's on keys. I'm trying to remember who else. Beth Turner is in that group. And oh, okay. Yeah. You want to hear an Earth, an Earth Day <laughs> is story? Is Johnny's mom in that band? I don't think Janie? so. I think she was like there... Yeah, because I think oh I gosh. think they were calling themselves Thundersleet. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's a Thundersleet. Mm. Thundersleet, yeah. So an all female band is as rare as Thundersleet. They said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so that'll be really fun. And then we got a yeah Bob Shoulder Gypsy Cafe. Big announcement here, guys. This is huge. Okay, wait a minute. So, wait, wait. Let me get the appropriate please give music. Give us the. Uh, uh, <laughs> Special announcement. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, Britton, do you want to tell the folks about it? Well, there's like all these artists. It's like, um, this is the Bob Childers Gypsy Cafe. <laughs> and this is a special event held annually now in Stillwater at the side of the old farm. And benefiting the Red Dirt Relief Fund. Which oh. is very important. Guys, it's your safety net. The Red Dirt Relief Fund is there for you if you need them. And I can't stress this enough. Listen, I was injured about a year ago. I broke my ankle. I reached out to the Red Dirt Relief Fund and they were able to assist me immediately. They had a checked me within a week. They answered my email from Key West, Florida, because they were all at Mile Zero Fest. Listen, this is something that's available to musicians, production people, camera people, sound guys. If you work in entertainment in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the Oklahoma area, you qualify for the Red Dirt Relief Fund. I know that during the pandemic, they sent out $500 checks to artists all over. Lots of artists just got checks. Well, you know, Oscar, if you had just kept your mouth shut, I wouldn't have broken your ankle and you wouldn't have had <laughs> I that. told you I'd come up with the money, Mr. Uh, Eric. Uh, Why did you get so rough? And so um, uh, so this is money. a great this is a great event in order to benefit uh, the Red Dirt Relief Fund, and it's the Bob Childers Gypsy Cafe. Um, and I know they're giving out the Restless Spirit Award for Monica Taylor, so she'll and be it'll be May fifth, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> oh, it's in Tahlequah. No, this will be in Stillwater. Oh, Stillwater. Yeah, Monica Taylor's going to be there. Uh, John Fulbright, Mike Hostie. So you drive west. Of course, right? the Red Dirt Rangers, who were hugely inspired by Bob Childers. Of course, so was I. Um, you know, we've got Mallory uh, Eagle, Jacob Tovar. Jacob Tovar. Carter Sampson, uh, Brandon Friend Clark. Monica. T now, you said something. What's she going to be doing, Monica? 
Is there something oh, special? Oh, the Restless Spirit Award. It's like something that they oh, give to an artist like, yes. this year. So, I think Brandon Jenkins got it because I was reading about it. Bob recently. Chiller's once wrote a song called Restless Spirits. Oh, so I guess they're giving it. an award called the Restless yeah, like Spirits Award now. Yeah, someone gets it, whoever like, embodies. You I, know. I can't. It touches my heart, and it makes me so happy to see Bob Chiller's being honored because Bob was just a friend. Uh, Bob was everybody's friend, and he was one of those people that when I first met him, he looked me in the eyes, and he threw his arms up for a hug, and he said, my people. <laughs> and that was his first words to me. And we hugged. And, and from that moment on, I always felt loved by Bob Childers. I always felt included by Bob. And he made that possible for everybody. Bob didn't know a stranger. And he always made everybody feel included. And so there he's one of those it. special individuals. That now there's this great festival honoring Bob Childers, who was a huge inspiration for bands like Medicine Show, for the Red Dirt Rangers, for Brandon Jenkins. He was the real deal. When I say the real deal, he walked it like he talked it. Bob not only lived the words he wrote, but he wrote the words he lived. And uh, wow. this just makes me uh, tickled pink to see this hometown mm -hmm. celebration benefiting the music of people in need here in, in uh, Oklahoma through the Red Dirt Relief Fund. Um, lots of lots of bands. Who else is here uh, on this one? Let's see. Justin Bloss, uh, Dan Martin, and even some of the Science Project guys. Got Brad James, Gene Williams. Bo Phillips. Uh, Chris Blevins. Autumn Ragland. And Amber Watson. Austin Dixon. J.D. Graham. Uh, Scott Evans, of course. Go out and see Scott Evans. Uh, he just released a new album, so pick that up. Uh, it's, it's it's a good one. Um, also, we've got Ty Smith out there and Bobby Moore. Um, go out and check out the Brothers Moore. They are wonderful. Buffalo Rogers will be out there. Jade Castle, Dylan Stewart, Joe Baxter, uh, Jordan Cox, Steve Hamby will be playing the festival. Uh, Steve Hamby, you may or may not be my cousin. I don't know, <laughs> but you could be my cousin, Steve Hamby. I'm thinking we might be related. Uh, mm. Anyway, uh, who else is out here, uh, Miss Britt? Uh, see, well, John Fulbright. I'm like, where are we? Can <laughs> right here, Gus. <laughs> Gus Burns. Yeah, Gus Burns, Ben Brock. Oh. Ben McKenzie, Jared Tyler will be performing at the Gypsy Cafe also. Uh, Gene Collier will be out there. Uh, Andy Adams, uh, Derek Paul, Jason Starkey will be performing. Gene Williams will be performing. Brad James, of course, Lohan Brad. Go out and watch him play the slide out there, guys. Um, and I'll be volunteering that day. So, And I think that they still need volunteers, so you know, yeah, I feel Chris like Bro hanging out for Chris the day. Chris Blevins will be there, <laughs> and Brittany will be there selling T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. And so it's going to be a fantastic event. Please check out the Bob Childers uh, Showcase Special, the Gypsy Cafe, up in Stillwater on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> And then next, see, we have uh, St. Cecilia's Listening Room, which is a new place. It's a new venue at St. Jerome's Church, like north of Canes, like around oh, Main I've and Latimer. Yeah, I saw a news story on this, actually. Yeah, and that's uh, Carla Carbonell's spot, actually. Nice. So nice. you telling me we got another music church <laughs> going on here? <laughs> all right. <laughs> actually, sense, yeah, yeah, basically. And he's like, yeah, he's been curating the space and has like all these songwriter things and um, these events. And so basically the deal is, yeah, it's a listening room. So it's like, I think you'll... Yeah, basically, like sit we down like and like listen room and <laughs> because there's no alcohol required, none yeah. sold. Now that's that's going to be important to a lot of our sober friends. Uh, yeah, places like the Gray Dog or places like the Blue Door, you can go, you can see these bands without feeling the pressure of having to have a drink or buy a drink. Or it's a place where a cannabis smoker can go uh -oh. after they've smoked. <laughs> and and a listening room is a, is a wonderful <laughs> addition to our Tulsa music hey, watch that. scene, uh, to our sound. Yeah, and like where you know, like everyone's going to be focused and you're not going to miss anything. Yeah, there are a lot of people that just don't want to be in a bar. And so a music <laughs> listening room is perfect for that. Yeah, we got rid of cigarettes, man. Let's <laughs> keep pushing. And, and some of these dates coming up, uh, let's see, um, coming up April 27th or the 13th, it's Kaylin Fay. And then she's the, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Man, I like her. Yeah, on the 27th, John Calvin Abney with Damien Shade. Love them. And May 11th, Travis Linville. May 18th, Chris Combs. On the 31st, Tim Eastman. June 7th, Jim Bachman, Justin Clyde Williams, and Dan Martin. And then June 13th, Minor Gold. So we got a lot going on in the calendar. Nice, nice. I was gassing up on the way here, and this kid was parked next to me, a little hot rod, and he's wearing a Combsy shirt. And I look over at him, and I go, hey, man. And I point at his shirt, and I give him the thumbs up, and he goes, it's my uncle. And I go, huh? <laughs> and I go, man, I like your shirt. And he goes, he's my uncle. 
Then he pulled out a gun. <laughs> and I, and I said, man, he sure is good. He goes, I haven't seen him in a while. And so I go, well, he's playing at the colony tonight with oh, Amber Watson. My. And the kid goes, I'm off work. I said, go see your uncle. So here on the Tulsa podcast, <laughs> where are you uniting families? We're yes. uniting <laughs> families, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yes. The community it it really has is. to come together. Oh, it is a grassroots <laughs> operation. <laughs> so, Combs, Combs, Chris, Chris, we saw your nephew, and he's looking great. So that's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> that's all I want is don't disrespect me coming up in the air with your family. <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, big event on... Kurt Vile and the Violators. Yeah, May 3rd, uh, Kurt Vile and the Violators. And I believe Paul Benjamin's opening, I think... Nice, yeah, I mean, nice. So, uh, yeah, that'll be the Guthrie Green. And yeah, Whirly Gig, that's another 420 show uh, at Thelma's. So nice, that'll be really fun. Nice. Go yeah. out and see those boys in Whirly Gig. That's a good time. Yeah. Put your dancing shoes on. <laughs> yes. Mm. And then let's see. Oh, there we go. Hey, <laughs> it's the <your> artwork. <laughs> there it is. Here we go. <laughs> Sleep at the Wheel is coming to the Canes Ballroom April 12th. At the Canes Ballroom. Those guys must be about 100 years old now. Man, huh? they're better than ever. And well, like Eric says, well, they shouldn't be getting worse. Well, they shouldn't be getting worse. <laughs> they're playing every night. Loudly. Asleep at the Wheel is the spoke within Red Dirt Country Music that binds the wheel to the outer rim. They are the spoke of the wheel. So if you're not familiar with uh, the music of Asleep at the Wheel, get that way. Who's the damn hub then, huh? Well, the hub of the, well, you know, we don't. There's know. only one hub. That, that might be, uh, I don't know. Bob don't Wills know. Somebody Texas in Texas. Playboy. Bob Wills in Texas Bob Playboy. Bob Wills in Texas Playboy. It's the okay. hub. That'll work. Right. And another uh, headliner from AFest, right Josh Leon. Fudge. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, Willie Leon. Jones. <laughs> No, there's Leon. He, yeah, he Leon. was spotted uh, observing the eclipse the that other day. Damn <laughs> Yesterday, Leon, there he was again. <laughs> Leon, I always. Well, at least he's wearing his safety glasses. Yes. yes. Let's see, and coming up to the Tulsa Theater, the Wallflowers. That's in September. So that's yes. Dylan Jr. Isn't it? Yeah, well, Jacob Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan and the Wallflowers at the Brady. Oops. Oh, uh, go back. Uh, oh, boy, they're <laughs> flying now. Aaron <laughs> Watson. Aaron Watson. Good old country music at the Canes Ballroom. Don't miss that. We got Papa Rod at Mayfest. Mm-mm. Papa Rod. see Papa Rod. And uh, good Brittany time. Howard at Canes. Which Brittany is really Howard of <laughs> Alabama Shakes. Yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we talked about that show uh, it's coming last up. week. And the next slide should be the date. Here. Yes, there it is, Canes. April 23rd. April 23rd, the Canes. Really if I you're not know. there, you are messing up in life. <laughs> Go I see know. Brittany Howard. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ZZ Top, uh, April oh 10th at the Tulsa Theater. Tickets are on sale now. With the sound man bass player. So if you didn't go see him in 86, this is your chance. <laughs> we saw him in 86 twice at the Tulsa Convention Center. That's right. They played two sold out shows. Folks camped out for days. Uh, at, we camped out for four that? days in 1986 at Pop and Go Video at 31st and Garnett. <laughs> had more fun camping out than we did at the actual show. The show was great. <laughs> but we had more fun in line with OU students and bikers. And we were high school kids. So we were trapped oh, between yeah. a group of OU students and a group of bikers. Wow. And uh, the show was fantastic. And they, this was to see the ZZ Top show. ZZ Top, 1986. They sold out so fast they had to add a second show, which at the time was unheard of. No one did that. Not two shows in the same town back to back. And let me tell you how that works, buddy. Tell us, Mr. Eric. In 1974, they played for the Hale High School prom. Yes, ZZ Top did play the Hale High School prom. Chris Coleman was there. She saw it with her own two eyes. So lots of good things coming to the Tulsa Theater. Go out and see ZZ Top. And you're at the venue shrine. It may be. Billy's getting old. So here we have uh, something coming to the venue shrine. We've got some some metal bands. Uh oh, uh, Trickster. Oh, not Pretty Boy Floyd. <laughs> Enough's enough. <laughs> Pretty Boy Floyd. Band Inc. Eye Bolt. Coming Thursday, May thirtieth. Okay, so what band did Pretty Boy Floyd influence with their name? Pink Floyd. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, great! Now I'm going. Now I totally forgot it. Uh, um. 
We'll come back to that. I'll you know, to... my grandma saw Pretty Boy Floyd in real life. The real and, one? Yeah, my grand, my mama, had, her daddy had a gas station over in Dawson. Yeah. Oh. And she told she told me a story oh, about God, her and her sisters getting to see the Pretty Boy Floyd mm-hmm. in real life. Wow. And even sixty years later, when she told me the story, she turned red and blushed and got giddy with excitement. Wow. Upon laying eyes on this gangster. <laughs> That's how I knew my mama was a gangster. Oh. Uh, was was just watching her light up. <laughs> like, course, I know that what, feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Pretty Boy Floyd, and to get to see him in real life, that was like a, you know, not only a folk hero, but he right. was a folk hero. Now, Oscar, did you know that the Barkers lived over just off of Peoria behind Central Park? I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, in fact, um, Doc with... Um, Urban Hero. I think he used to live either on the street or in the house. But they lived here during the 30s. And uh, Ma Barker and the boys and the whole gang. Wow. And they they ran operations out of here for quite a while. Huh. There's a bar in Fort Smith that has a spot at the bar where Bell Star was shot. And it's a place called Roosters in Fort Smith. So if you're ever at yeah. Roosters, find that spot at the bar where Bell Star was shot. Coming up to the Vanguard is somebody called the Black Moods, May 22nd. With some hearts and Groucho some and their Tulsa and Groucho. bands. Yeah, yeah that's going to be a good one. Go out and see them at the Vanguard. And, um, so here we have a, a Nugs.net, a hippie jam band, if you will, band uh, Squeaky Feet. And they're coming to the Vanguard. Uh, 414, April 14th, they will be here. That's you like, virtually next week. If you week. like jam bands, uh, this is the show for you. If you like hippie music in the vein of um, uh, Fish, Umphreys McGee, uh, this is a band for you. This is a band for you. Go out and check them out, guys. Don't miss this. All right, and then oh yeah, Johnny Molinax. He's uh, now recently been doing uh, bluegrass brunch in Oklahoma City. So uh, yeah, here we've got him. Uh, yeah, April twentieth at the Blue Note for four twenty show, twelve to three, and then back uh, April twenty first at Mercury for Sunday. And last Sunday was really awesome at Bluegrass Brunch because they had a red dirt really fun fundraiser. Well, they were selling gumbo and had a someone selling a bunch of jewelry, and all of the proceeds went to the red dirt really fund. And I bought a bunch of it. So. <laughs> A lot of really cool artwork being sold, so you never know what's going to be going on there. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. There's a little picture of the Kings. Oh, we the love old. the old ballroom. Man, it just makes me happy. That's an old it. picture. So Sunday, May 26th, 7 p.m., Whitey Morgan and the 78s will be uh, at the venue shrine. Mm-hmm. All right. And then uh, Radke at the shrine, also April 25th. Go out and see Radke. Uh, they're guaranteed fun. Guaranteed fun. Yeah, and then the farm, farmer's market just uh, opened up with the big grand opening last Saturday. So yeah, the farmer's back market's at it. back, guys. <laughs> Full blown. Get your fresh organic veggies. Go down there and, and see Chef Terry Fermo. She'll be down there every Saturday. We've got lots of friends at the farmer's market. We'll be doing a segment from the farmer's market uh, coming up in a That's couple of That's what episodes. I hear. So uh, go out and check out the farmer's market. It's moved. It's over at Whittier Square now. It's no longer on Cherry Street. It's moved. So well, that's a safer location uh, over there because Cherry Street's getting a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's way, was be- it's way better over, over here. <laughs> I was just, I was just a pedestrian, and they always tried to run me down with a car. And there's always live music too. So live music. Yeah, look for Steve Liddell. Good. Steve Liddell yeah. plays out the farmers market. So check him. And out. you know what's really funny? Because quite a while back, man, Cherry Street, right in that, in that, in those three blocks, that was a real happening music scene over there. Oh and yeah. Now, and not now. To the best of my knowledge, there are no live music. No, well, clubs um, no. In the, in the Cherry used Street used to be corner. the full moon, and even yeah. Smoke had live music because Pryor would play over at Smoke. Yeah, well, or before, no, before, before it was, it was called Smoke, Smoke, right? It, it was, was something else. It was 15th Street. He called it his old man Cafe. gig. Well, see, also <laughs> it was 15th Street Cafe, and he called it his old man gig because it started at seven. Right. Well, they had. Uh, he was sheepishly ashamed of it, but he like played it, normal. and he did great there. You Back know? in the eighties, they had a they had a pretty tragic police shooting out in that alley, and it kind of put the kibitz on a bunch of them. Well, all through the nineties, though, the full moon rocked live music. You know, yeah. seven nights a week, five nights a week. It was a, a fantastic place to but be. But now, no. So come on. But now, no, Cherry Street. Where did the, where did the music go? Tulsa hey. Sound Podcast is coming at you, Cherry Street. Cherry Street. <laughs> Venue owners. We're giving We're you the finger you. wag. 
finger wagging at finger you. Finger wagging. You got that crazy angled parking. You got what you wanted. Now it's time for us to get what we want. We want music. We want music. We want music. So we've got the Mercury Lounge uh, line. Okay, Mercury here. Lounge. Okay, I'll show right. you. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, this week at Mercury, we have uh, Amber Watson with her residency on Mondays. And then Tuesday, which is happening now, you know, Chris Blevins every Tuesday at 8. And let's see, Wednesday, there's Pilgrim. Thursday, Paul Benjamin Trio. And then Friday, um, let's see, you got Cassie Lotshaw's Happy Hour. And then in the evening at 8, Cole Chaney with Thomas uh, Sorba. And then 11, Nate Frederick and the Wholesome Boys. And uh, Saturday, Red Dirt Roundup with the Red Dirt Rangers at 4. And then 8 is, yeah, the Daisy Chain with Big Mogus. And the Late Show at 11 with Matt Axton. And then Sunday's uh, brunch at 12, Brandon Clark at 4, and soup at 8. Good All God, right. that place go is the, like Go a, see the soup at 8 o'clock, guys. It's like a shooting gallery. <laughs> it's like 10, but now it's 8. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing. And then also, uh, this will be neat. There's a lot of Tulsa people up here in Tahlequah, April 26th and 27th at the Red Fern Festival. Uh, Lance Rourke is the headliner. Oh, man, we love some Lance Rourke around here. <laughs> That's what I'm I've sure. heard. Yeah, then come out for uh, Randy seat. Crouch and the Flying Horse Opera will be there. Osage County, Vox Squadron, The Hype, uh, PM Jam, Studio House, Pilgrim will be there, Ruben. <laughs> Ruben's a huge Pilgrim fan. Me too. Uh, All right. Amber Watson, of course, uh, Seth Riley, Garrick Fawcett, Joe Mack. Go out and see Joe Mack. He's a good man. Um, who else we got out there? Carly T. Oh, yeah, Michael Campa, who's in the uh, Grenada Goblins, that's playing at Colony. So okay. he'll be out there. Micah Bell and Jackson Gallette <laughs> will be at the Red Fern Festival. Go out and check out Jackson Gallette. And then here's all these things happening at the Shrine. Boy, the Shrine. Look at all the those shrine. shows. Lots <laughs> going on. Donnie Rich has been in overdrive. He's been working Jeremiah Kirby to the Jeremiah bone. Jeremiah Kirby. Who self produces <laughs> shows on the fly. Down Jeremiah there. Kirby. So we've got the, the how do you pronounce this? <laughs> <laughs> Cast, the Castellos. The Castellos. Castellos. And Andrew B., Devin the Dude, Trickster, let's see, MC Chris. May 30th for mm -hmm. Trickster. Get a babysitter. <laughs> and we got Foster Pussycat, Doyle and Otep, Whitey Morgan. Whitey Morgan is May 26th. Ian Moore and Ian Moore Band will be uh -oh. there June 13th. Justine will be down there. She's, yes. he's, she's his friend. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and Josie Scott, August 3rd, coming to the venue show. I'm going to send her that message right now. Do that. Yeah, and the Oddities and Curiosities Expo. That'll be Woo, coming up soon in Tulsa. It's going to be some freaky stuff. Hmm, and I bet they got one of them pig babies in a jar. They got a pig fetus in a jar down there at the Oddities. They thing. got a what? Well, they usually have, I don't know. It's odd. Hmm. <laughs> that will be Saturday, May 11th, and Sunday, May 12th. So, so a lot of really cool So shrunken heads, uh, voodoo powders, all these things, like go visit the, the Oddities uh, and Curiosities show. That's a fun event in the afternoon. You see, know, get we out of just house. used to be able to go to the Osborne Museum on, on Skelly Drive and see all that stuff. Oh, it's it's gotten even more bigger and, and oh. more curious than ever. <laughs> oh. Curious. Mm. Oh, yeah, and then Saturday, June 15th, Indigenous with the Dustin Pitsley Band. Dustin at the Pitsley, shrine. yeah. That's yeah, which I really want to go to that. Yeah, I like both of them. And, uh, yeah, then the Colony. Um, let's see, well... Here's some of their residencies. You have Desi and Cody still Mondays, Cody Clinton, and Tuesday, Big Mogus. Tuesday, uh, Big Mogus. And Amber Watson currently. And then Wednesday, Bobby Moffat with his A Hip Hop Happy Hour. And then The Soup at 8. And Caitlin Faye at 9 p.m. on Tuesdays. 2809 South Harvard. 2809 South Harvard. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then Thursdays, Tom Pavier with his Happy Hour and Seth Lee Jones on Thursdays. And um, let's see. And then that's coming up at the shrine, got Trickster Acoustic. Yeah, 18th and yeah. Boston. We talked about that. <laughs> 18th and Boston. Blues Traveler, Big Head Todd, the Monsters. The Monsters. Harmonica Tour. Vest. And that's coming this Harmonica summer. Harmonica 2024, Vest. Friday, August, is, August the 2nd at Irving, the Pavilion Texas. of Irving, Texas. That's just Dallas. It's well, not too far. That's not too this far. This ain't the Dallas. <laughs> sound podcast. <laughs> well, I know this. A lot of our fans are Blues Traveler fans. A lot of our fans are Big Head Todd and the Monsters fans. Of course, 
the Tulsa connection to Big Head Todd the Monsters is Corey Mauser. Well, why aren't they playing here, buddy? Corey Mauser played keyboards for Big Head Todd the Monsters back during the Horde tour days, where they toured with the Allman Brothers, uh, Blues Traveler, Big Head Todd. A lot of those bands were on that tour. It was a national tour. It was a huge deal. And they did it for like three summers in a row, the Horde Fest. Thank God I was immersed in my own career. If you you want to see Blues Traveler, if you want to see Big Head Todd, uh, check them out. August Even 2nd, if you got to drive to in Dallas. Irving, Texas, yeah, it's not that far. It's not, it's not that, that far. It's not just for a real fan. Unless you get a ticket, <laughs> then it can be pretty. Oh, yeah, and then Wednesdays we have uh, the Tom Skinner Science Project, oh, as usual. At Thelma's, and when you go into Thelma's, tip this young lady, please, <laughs> yeah, please, <lady> cash <laughs> accepted in the tip jar. You, That's right. Look at me. Look at me. Yep. Tip her. Do you tip her? And it's such a fun <laughs> night. Like it just gives me so much joy every single week. And here's here's the new ad. Thelma's. <laughs> it's not just an old man bar anymore. How about that? You oh. Oh, yeah, there's <laughs> dancing, cocktails, there's usually snacks, especially, like, uh, yeah, some snacks. of the ladies will bring snacks. Woo, we yeah. like snacks. <laughs> snacks and snackery. Mm. But yeah, and I've been there for every single one except for one. Even a couple I asked off for, I always try to make it, so it's just really good vibes. <laughs> and <laughs> Most wonderful, most wonderful. Okay, now here we have an interesting graphic. Man, this I'll is something you. coming to the Vanguard. And... And we have discovered that we can't read it. We can't read it. It's, it's, it is not legible. I believe the name of the band there, is Pathology. There are metal Pathology. bands coming. Okay. And that's only because, as, a, as a graphics it. artist myself, I have the ability to read that, but barely. Holy cow. Serenade, Schwelde, Sch- Schweilheiden, <laughs> Duskan, Dish, Well, anyway. Or, or Sunday, April 28th for Metal. That's Vanguard. Right. Vanguard. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Really the ladies, put your short black mini skirts on. Guys, not too much eyeliner, but get there anyway. You know, it was interesting. Lita Ford was supposed to play at the Vanguard a few weeks ago, and then. Something happened. I, I think that the, I think they must have had a mechanical. She was supposed problem. to be in the Legacy Hall, right? So we were going to have her in Legacy Hall. She canceled her center. tour. No. Oh, they canceled the, the tour. tour. Yeah. So oh, dates okay. in Missouri okay. got canceled. Dates in Texas. Well, got that's canceled. a shame because we were really ready for that. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we were we were trying to work with them on rescheduling <laughs> that in a building, which would be an interesting. I mean, there's we've done metal well, up there. Well, we've got Jim times. Brewer, the comedian, coming to the Tulsa Convention Center. So get your Jim Brewer tickets. He's a guaranteed laugh. That's going to be a good time. Oh, well, there you go. Now coming back with the set list, Tulsa Live Music Report, I have a few more shows to add that I really wanted to talk about that had missed the slideshow. And so these first two are going to be at the Whittier Bar, which is in Kendall Whittier, right at Lewis and Admiral. And they've been a really great venue for having like punk and metal shows and heavier rock. And they'll also have some honky-tonk nights, you know, psychedelic music, experimental, and just anything in between. And so Saturday, April 13th, there'll be Free Association. They're a local Tulsa band that's kind of psychedelic vibes. And they'll be having a album come out this summer. So definitely check them out. And also it'll be with Moon Song out of Fayetteville. And then Acid Queen, which is another Tulsa band that's heavier rock. And I love those guys. So it'll be Saturday, April 13th at the Whittier at 9. And then... Coming up on Tuesday, April 16th, it'll be a Latin night, which I'm so excited for to be at the Wood Year. And the first band is Geo Chamba, which is a Denver Cumbia band. With And then also Los Shadows. They're a surf dream pop band from California. And then followed by one of my favorites, Bruja Roots, which is a Tulsa band. And they're Latin, funk, rock. They'll have songs in Spanish and and it's just so like fun to dance to and have like really great shows and that's the project of david hernandez who used to have the band david's bandana which played a lot around town and so brujo roots has been his band for the last few years and they're wonderful and then also we have the sound pony birthday weekend may friday may 3rd through sunday may 5th and that sunday is going to be really special that's the 18 year anniversary party with four bands at Combo Nouveau, Snake and the Charmers, Bronco Henrietta, Dead Shakes, and DJ Catnip and DJ Doc Freeman. And that'll be at Doors at 3, show starts at 4, with music all day, Sunday, May 5th at Sound Pony. Come celebrate 18 years of Sound Pony right next door to the Canes, and that's 409 North Main Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, well, there's a lot of great music coming up this weekend and this month and to come so i hope you all get out and just uh enjoy the wonderful spring weather and some, go see some live music thank you 
Britt, thanks so much for coming down tonight. Oh, yeah, thank you. We're so glad. Having. She's got to go to work now. But <laughs> Brittany's on her way to work. So, so we're going to um, <laughs> let her go to work. <laughs> and uh, we really want to thank you for coming in thank and, and going over all this. Thank of you course. so much. Because we'll you're, like our, you're like you're like deck level connection. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're right. plugged into all the amplifiers. Well, yeah, so. She knows us. everybody. I, I think yeah. there's no. <laughs> and she knows everybody. You know and everybody. So check out her Indian taco stand, please, at the Park Grove on May Day. Yeah, May 4th. You got it. <laughs> All right. Okay, Thanks, man. Everybody. Well, we will be right back in just a few seconds after these exciting commercial messages. Don't sound podcast. Don't sound podcast. Mr. Eric, what happened in Tulsa before the JJK Leon Russell era of the oh, Tulsa for crying sound. out loud, Leon will tell you. I might it took a long time for it. You know, the fact is, is that the Tulsa sound probably can be tracked back to the late twenties, early thirties, because when Tulsa was originally founded, it was a it was a sort of an oil boom town, and as the largest quote unquote town uh, inside the oil boom area. Uh, Tulsa became the place where all of the corporations sent people to work, uh, sent people in, executives from the East Coast, West Coast people. There wasn't as many, but they were coming from all over the world. And this is when Tulsa was known as the oil capital. Well, this was actually Before really that? like while well, that was starting to happen. Uh, okay. It exploded. And this is one of the interesting things about Tulsa. It's very different than other cities. I've, I've had the opportunity to live all over the country in my years. Lived in San Francisco and also Oakland. Lived in Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia is a city that goes back to literally the Jamestown colony. People, you know, 450 years ago, I lived about uh, half a block from uh, a couple of... Uh, Revolutionary War battles, battle spots. Mm-hmm. Out here, it was nothing. Nah, nothing. Nothing but cattle, bison, a lot of grass. Places Oklahoma like, was a territory. Oklahoma was territory. If you watch Gunsmoke, they talk about going down to the territory. They're talking about coming to Oklahoma. So when oil was discovered at the Glen Pool. Yes. It Largest was, natural pool of oil ever discovered, ever. On the that, then that's correct, and the Glen Pool was close enough to Tulsa to make it its center of operations, and even today down near Glen Pool we have the big tanks, massive tank massive farms tank in farms. Glen Pool. We have two refineries in our city, which for a town of our size is is amazing. Um, it's it, it still is a big thing here. But it's just not as big a thing as it was back then. So how does this all play in to yeah, the Tulsa so sound? How does this play into the question is what was Tulsa? There were two things the going Tulsa on. One thing like was for the era. One of, thing was all of these um, executives and their families and their wives and their children moving here. Uh, people who were from East Coast cities uh, who were used to quite a bit of uh, social society situation. He also had a bunch of these crazy wildcatter folks coming in, oil field, roustabouts, welders, pipe benders, pipe layers, uh, anybody that could work in the oil industry, whether on the drilling side or the refinery side. 
Or in manufacturing. We've always had manufacturing facilities here in Tulsa well, that's the right. world production. My Uncle Wayne was a code welder at Unit Rig. I've inspected a ton of welds. So you have. You I've have. done it. So you had these two groups of people that suddenly are in this little town that just exploded overnight. One of the first things that the society ladies did was they told their husbands, well, we want to have a an orchestra here. And that was the genesis of what was the Tulsa Philharmonic, which during the 80s or 90s really sort of fell on hard times. So right right after the 2000s, Tulsa Philharmonic kind of went away. And now we have the Tulsa the, Symphony the, Orchestra. Tulsa Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. Which is just, I've worked with both of those entities. Right. Um, but alternately, all those roughnecks and all of those code welders and all those pipe benders and boiler makers, they wanted to have their hoot nanny too. And so there was a lot of, uh, a lot of music that kind of came up from the ground. Uh, the Wills family were fiddlers. Uh, Bob Wills' father right. was a almost like a circuit judge of a fiddler. He would travel around to different communities that were having dances, having events, and he would be the fiddle and he would call square dancing. And this was the environment that, that Bob and, and, and a lot of the young people back then were brought up in. And so as music changed in the 1930s, Tulsa became a, a sort of cosmopolitan place out here in the vast ocean of grass. and Yeah, for a 500-mile radius, we were the cultural center of our area for, what do you think, maybe 100 years or, or more? No, probably 25. Uh, <laughs> yeah, remember, before statehood, there was this is true. Nothing. We haven't been a state that Nothing. long, kids. We think we've been a state for a long time. I those, remember when Oklahoma turned 75. You see those trees growing when you drive around Tulsa? Guess what? Most 90% of those trees were probably planted by people. Back then, it was it was barren prairie, except right here in Tulsa, because this is where the river was. It was a little green spot. And that's why it was such a popular place, because you had water, you had so uh, anywhere there's a bend in the river, people tend to gather. That's right. And, and so civilizations, settlements are built at the bend of a river or the mouth of a river for various reasons. But that's what gave us Tulsa. Well, there you go. And so these these groups started off with kind of what I guess today we would call bluegrass, but really was more just like fiddle or hoedown music or Western Western dance there was a certain amount of polka in it because of all of the german immigrants and even today you know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, music from south of the border still retains a lot of that german polka feel sure. uh, but through this process this strange new type of music that was called western swing was created and western swing was literally these hoedown fiddle players who were starting to work with some of the horn guys and stuff that were also here to play with the Philharmonic. Well, not all of them, but a few of the renegades. And they wanted to copy the music that they were hearing on the radio coming from bands like Artie Shaw and some of the big uh, swing groups of the 30s. And so they infused basically this square dance feeling cowboy music with the swing instrumentation and which included a certain type of drum beat. Now this is where the western and country and western comes from. Right. We put the western and country and western in Tulsa. Well essentially yeah, yeah that's this that's is this is the first place it ran into that that influence. Absolutely. And in the, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, even in the 50s, it was um, people like Gene Autry. A lot of the cowboy singers were very popular, and and still were kings of their entertainment realm. And so, a lot of their success nationally fed over to the bands that were here. Well, Gene Autry was a national sensation. He was a singing cowboy. He was yeah. a star of the Saturday matin, nat, Te matinee. Tex Ritter. 
Is Tax rate. Now, was Gene Autry from Oklahoma? I believe that he is. Well, I, I, of course, somebody's going to let me let's know. Ask our, let's ask our viewers. Hey, viewers. we can ask our director to look up where Gene Autry's from. I bet you he'll know. What does the middle finger mean again? Oh, there we go. Well, <laughs> it's and, a half a peace sign he's giving you, Eric. Well, right on, bro. <laughs> but uh, to, to, to not keep it uh, real boring, but the fact is is that a lot of his music that that was we would now call Western Swing was kind of brought up by this, this hybrid of Connections is sort of a uh, literally the country meets a, uh, country mouse city mouse. Thing. Yeah, this is where jazz meets the western swing. Exactly, and so that music became very popular. I know that when my father was in World War II, that his ship was uh, in uh, San Diego, and they went to see Bob Wills performing out there at a large venue. There was like four thousand people out there to see Bob Wills. Yet most of those people were originally from Oklahoma, Texas, and they had gone out there to work in the aircraft plants because Pickens here wasn't so good in the yeah, 1930s. It's true. So he had a, a giant um, listening audience already there. So that was a really great thing, and that helped to make him a national act. And from the influence of that, I believe that then you track this down and something happened in the 60s, um, rock and roll. Late 50s, early 60s, rock and roll became an influence. There was a lot of bands here in Tulsa that did early rock and roll music. And on a show here in the short future, we're going to be covering some of those groups because there's a lot of stuff that you'd really be surprised. Yeah, guys like Jimmy Markham and Jimmy Carstein, yeah. they were some of the first pioneers to ever do it. Rick Potter. These Rick guys Potter. started out playing rock and roll when Bob... Or, when when everybody else was just starting to to do the same thing, yeah, and but it had that same swing feel that the swing Western swing bands had. This is part of the that Tulsa came sound. Up from if you've ever done square dance, there's a swing to it. If you don't swing in square dance, you you kind of you're gonna miss your partner. Square dance, something taught in Tulsa Public Schools. Well, it was when I was in school. Anyway, <laughs> it should uh, be taught, taught everywhere. The they did. They did. Um, it was part of the thing. Square you know? dancing is. I'm not going to call it a dying art, but I'll say that it's not as popular right now as it was, say, 15 or 20 years ago. Um, primarily because you have to like actually do something. You have to go to a place. It's where on the comeback, like ska. Yeah, well, line dancing, <laughs> line dancing in a they weird love way. Line dancing in country music. It's a music. kind of a form of square dancing. They, they line dance to rap music. It's the craziest well, thing, I've, man. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> but you uh, haven't seen anything till you've seen a redneck girl walk down the bridal aisle to Trap Queen on the east side of Tulsa. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the um, so the question back to the yeah. Tulsa. The question is, how, what was music like before the JJ Kale Leon Russell era? Of well, Trying to get there because basically these early rock and roll bands were the spawn of all that. Right. Um, Leon, we got to remember, Leon started out, I'm not going to say he was square, but he went out to California and he got a job working basically as a studio musician, writing music, being a transcriptionist, being an arranger and composer for pop artists of the day who needed... Uh, charts written for their tracks and as a master pianist he could come up with interesting chord changes and variations and offer these to the rock and roll songwriters of that era and in this way this is how Tulsa kind of snuck its way and this into, was in Los Angeles at the time oh uh, there there's one place it was yes. and it kind of snuck its way into the national music sound again um, the list of artists that Leon worked with in this capacity goes on and on. And as know. more biographies are written about Leon, Leon and more information is out there, a couple of great books have been written about him in the last couple of years. This information is in those books. I always personally, especially now, now that I've had a chance to learn, I think of Leon Russell as more of a member of the Carpenters than anything else. Even, I'm, I mean, I know, you know, that... Young Blood and and all of the uh, stuff he did with Joe Cocker and Mad Dogs and Englishman Tour and all of his shelter things and I know, but 
he was creating magic with the Carpenters, too, because he and Richard Carpenter, man, they knew how to communicate musically. Right. And uh, uh, some of the incredible stuff that those guys created together, along with the Wrecking Crew and... So the world class wrecking crew. Just Google that alone, and you will find a musical trove there. That's a great video on YouTube if you want to watch a documentary that will blow your ever loving musical mind. These guys are the heavyweight cats. The wrecking crew. They were the shit. And it was uh, it was a documentary done by Tommy Tedesco, who's a f- the famous guitar player. Believe me, you have not lived your life and not heard Tommy Tedesco play guitar. So tell us how Leon was involved with the Wrecking Crew, Mr. Well, Leon was one of a number of, of studio musicians. Basically, the Wrecking Crew was a core of musicians that were added to or subtracted from depending on the needs of the session. Studio musicians. Studio Hired musicians. guns. So some of the members of the Wrecking Crew were Glenn Campbell, Hal Blaine, famous drummer, uh, Carol Kay, uh, probably the most... The most heard bass player of all time, Carol Kay. Um, just a whole number of different talented musicians from all over the country. But if there was a pop record in the 60s, they were on it. Right. And a lot of these guys were from Texas, Oklahoma. They were represented well because the music industry doesn't really, back then, they didn't care where you were from. As long as you could get the job done. Things are a little bit different after, well, really in a weird way, that in itself kind of begat the, the era of the super group where we, I think when people found out that the monkeys didn't really play their own songs, they, what? Were, they were kind of, yeah, Oscar, I know. But the fact is, is that first P Diddy this week. Now this shit. I'm (laughs) Uh, well. People demanded more from their artists. They wanted to know that they wanted to buy the records of the artists that were playing their own stuff. That's why Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons were able to make this jump from kind of a a fifties doo wop band into a band that has put out a decent record every 10 years since. And the way that they did that was they played their own music. They wrote their own songs. And when they went in the studio, they were backed up with key players, but it was still them as the core. And there was a big change in the 60s towards this idea of you're going to hear a real band that really plays. And well, what the Wrecking Crew guys played with everybody from Motown artists to, to diff, do you know? But do genres. you know why they existed? Because at the time, not enough musicians had learned to be extremely proficient at playing rock, country, blues, music. And so in order to make sellable records, they would bring a band in and they were horrible. And so they would just say, why don't you boys go down and get some hamburgers? And then they'd bring in these other cats and they'd play the tracks and then they'd bring them back and say, well, this is what we're, this, this is what we're going to release. Yep. And they couldn't say anything about it. Buddy Holly was one of the first artists to demand in his contract that one, it's his band, and they're going to play. We're not going to be any backup musicians. Two, he's going to produce the record. There's not going to be anybody standing around telling him how to do it. And three, they're going to write the songs, and they're going to keep part of the royalties. And the record company was, say what? But he had so much power in his popularity that he made them do that. And Buddy Holly started with, with that act. Buddy Holly created the idea of the self-performing band-songwriter combination that we are comfortable and familiar with today. Because if we had been kids back in the 60s and the 50s, we wouldn't know who was playing on the tracks. Now, J.J. Kale. Uh J.J. was a recording artist. But more importantly, J.J. was a recording engineer, and he was an engineer during this time. And so he was there when 
bands started showing up that could play their own stuff. Yeah. But that's why he was so proficient at so what I'm he did. So I'm going to stop you right there. So J.J. Cale was a sound engineer before he became an artist. Well, he, he was always a songwriter, always a guitar player. But yeah, his job, his his day gig, what, <laughs> what fed him and his family for a while was his recording engineer. Well, so let that be a lesson to you guys. Be nice to your sound man. Because uh, he could be fucking J.J. Kale. So remember that when you're being shitty. All right. Well. Rant over. So, (laughs) but it was, uh, so the recording artists that did well were the ones that understood the the magic. Uh, Leon understood that uh, if you really want musicians to come in and play tracks, you can't just stand there and tell them what to do. You have to write it down on paper. Um... There are other musicians around that uh, that were key players. Um, T. Garden Senior, you know, right with with T. Van Garden Winkle. Van Winkle, and they they kind of had to leave Tulsa to make their to make their success. That was the way it was. That's the way it was. But they did it, and in doing so, they injected some of the Tulsa sound into the international music scene. Now, I have a theory on why these Okies and guys from Texas were so popular because they're in LA. good. Well, that they're that, good, and, and that's a, really it. Well, we have a tradition here of front porch music we sit and we pick and sing out on the porch but we, oscar we would spend in hours los angeles on they couldn't care less if you're good enough to read the chart play the tracks get it right the first time you're the boy yeah but our guys were better because they had all this front porch experience well not only oscar. that but because a lot of them had tulsa public school music education yeah which was outstanding and this goes back to the social ladies in the 1920s they also felt it was extremely important that the arts whether it be the graphic arts music arts the performing arts theatrical arts Tulsa's were all of, included in the tulsa public school tulsa curriculum. for a long time was one of three cities with a philharmonic an opera and a ballet a city our size with a full time opera, imagine? a full time ballet, and a full time philharmonic. They? That's Tulsa. That's we Tulsa. are patrons of the arts here. Yeah. Um, I myself spent 10 years at the PAC working hand in hand with the Tulsa Ballet, he did. the Tulsa Opera. I saw him there. And, uh, you he, know, done a lot of, of, of philharmonic. Working gigs. under the springed heel of. Terry Abel. But one of the things that we are very proud of here is that we're able to maintain these things in Tulsa. Right. There are a lot of cities that are bigger than us. Hey, they don't have an opera. They don't have a ballet. They don't have a philharmonic. They and you don't. think, well, well there's well, only Tulsa three is an cities. Art city, and there's no Absolutely. two ways about it. I'll tell you another person that really brought the Tulsa sound into the international music sound is uh, Dwight Twilley. Because Dwight Twilley was cranking out pop hits on am radio just as the fm radio crossover happened and his ability to write a three-minute pop song that was easily uh remembered made him a superstar in the in the shading days of am pop radio and carried him through to the fm side of things so who were some of the artists in that era before the leon days before the jj days who were some of the famous names around town um, well, that I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not expert enough to say that because I hadn't been born yet, but fair. He um, is older than dirt though. <laughs> all you have to do is go down to the Canes ballroom and walk around and look at the paintings. That's true. That's true. Because uh, each one of those photographs, I say they're paintings, they're, they're photographs. Each one of those photographs, every single individual in there was critical. Um, Hank Thompson. Hank Thompson. Tennessee Ernie Ford. Tennessee Ernie Ford. Tulsa's always been a jazz city, Mr. Eric. K-Star. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and try to press my mind because obviously it's something that we need to do on a, on a show sure. more legitimately. But needless to say, these artists were uh, key in creating a sound. And that sound exist today if you will because again i contend yeah it's a drum sound yeah it's a vibe but it's an attitude it's an attitude of knowing knowing that you practice knowing that you enjoy it and knowing that people are responding to it gives you a confidence as a musician 
Right. The last and, part's the most important. And I can tell you something, too. Uh, there are some places where bands uh, play gigs and th cities that think it's funny to throw beer bottles and stuff and to heckle bands on stage and to give them a hard time. That does not happen here. No. I've no, never seen more respectful audiences than for live local bands. People just going out and writing a song on their front porch and then yeah. going out there and playing it. I, I, some of the things I've seen, and not even far from here, St. Louis used to be horrible the way that they would treat visiting groups, and I've been, I've been a part of that. Sure, <laughs> so, sure. I, you always know when you come to Tulsa that, that you're going to have a good time. That the audience is going to dance usually. Because, well, for so long it was illegal, so they... That's you know. <laughs> true. So it's very interesting that you mentioned that about Buddy Holly um, having control the way yeah. that he did. But one of my favorite opening lines ever in all of music is uh, uh, from a Buddy Holly song. Yeah? What yeah. is that? That opening line is, I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. That's right. That's the first line of Not Fade Away. And, of course, if you're deadhead NFA guys, not fade away, we got to thank Buddy Holly for remember, you know, for reminding us all. And you know what else we have to Love thank Buddy real, Holly Love is real, man, for? not fade away. We have Buddy Holly to thank for Gary Busey. That's true. You know, my mom went to Eddie high school with Gary Busey. Jay a day. They were in the very first graduating class at Nathan Hale. Yeah, and, and Gary, I hope you watch our Gary, show. Gary, you are we, invited we on love the show. You. We, I, of all of the people in the world, you know, and it's really funny because a few years ago, um, my guitar player friend, Glenn Douglas, um, he ended up uh, buying a bed from uh, Gary's brother. David. David. and yeah. David uh, played keyboards famously for the Steve Pryor Band during his uh, Los Angeles time And uh, Glenn tells me that uh, Gary may have slept in this bed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gary may have slept in that, in that bed. bed. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, dude. But, you know, I mean, just, just a Steven Seagal movie alone makes me want to hang with the mouth. But <laughs> no, seriously. But this... You know, this is why we have a Tall Sound podcast. We could talk about this sort of stuff because um, there's so much to it. I mean, we could literally do a show every day and talk about a different aspect. I know that in an upcoming show very soon, we're going to talk about some of the uh, some of the music yeah. stores. So that was were Gene around. Autry from Oklahoma? Well, so in 1928. In 1928, he worked for KVOO. That's uh, KVOO. Hold it. Uh, and he's referred to as an Oklahoma. So are that's you ready? It. Star, stage, and screen. Are you Gene ready? Autry. And are you this ready? goes back to the singing cowboy goes all the way back. Are you ready? Yeah. The sound of the Midwest. 150,000 clear channel watts. This is KVOO in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There we go. This is CBS. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, so there's, gosh, there's so many. KVOO, what, what's the Tulsa sound? Uh, the fact that we had a radio station that pumped local music to most of the country for 40 years at night. Yeah. yeah. Every, every trucker, you know, and uh, that's a that's a pretty big legacy. And there. On a clear night, you could hear KVOO in Bakersfield, California. You could hear it in Canada. Uh, you could hear, you know, I've heard, uh, famously, I've heard Merle Haggard tell stories you about hear listening to KVOO. Jalisco, Mexico. While he was in Southern California. Yeah, man. All the way out to Tennessee. Tennessee. Well, when it hit the Appalachians, it kind of dropped out. But uh, they weren't really beamed anywhere north. But uh, if you ever want, if you drive out in East Tulsa and see the big three antennas that are out on 11th Street, about 145th. Yeah. Uh, those are the KVOO towers. And so they, what was so special about their, their power system out there? Well, certain channels, certain radio stations during... Uh, were designated what they call a clear channel station. And no, that doesn't mean clear channel company. It's a radio term that means that at night there's nobody on that frequency. So that allows them to open up the throttle. So during the daytime, I think they were limited to 50,000 watts of AM broadcast power, which gets them, oh, 150 mile radius, the 300 mile circle, four, 500 mile circle. But at night they get up that to 50,000. And when they hit, when they hit the ionosphere and make the skip happen, they can bounce an AM radio wave 
uh, virtually anywhere until it hits tall mountains. Oh, wow. So it would be hard to get KVOO, say, in Seattle or San Francisco because of the Sierras. But Southern California, where it comes down around the end of the Sierras and the Rockies, it's a straight path right through there. The KVOO famously was an AM station and AM. also an FM station. And an FM station. Later, they, they got an FM. When FM became the thing... And, and, it then, was. It and really then, and then, yeah. But uh, eventually, the, the KVOO uh, call letters were uh, retired on FM, and uh, things changed a little bit. AM radio is not what it used to be, um, and that's primarily because of satellite. AM radio was where the truckers lived. Uh, you're traveling across the country, and that way you could only you only had to listen to two or three radio stations all the way from New York all the way to California. Yeah. Well, now all the trucks have satellites, so they can listen to Howard Stern from they listen to podcasts nowadays. Coast to Con- Shining Coast. So you know, podcast has taken Pod- over typical standard old school media. What people get their news from these days are from podcasts. What people get their entertainment just from like these right days here, are like podcasts. Here, just like right here. I watch the news and they're doing stories about stories covered on podcasts. That's all that's in. That's that's cool. So we've seen a huge shift in independent media like the Tulsa Sound podcast TSP. and uh, the lying national media, which will never tell you the truth. Well, there you go. So <laughs> actually, I'm the lying local media. So anyway. Yes, we'd like to consider ourselves the lying local media. That's right. But you know, we don't have any interest. We're not sponsored by anybody nobody is uh, paying us to do this no, we're here for it's you it's a hobby by gosh but we're here for you uh but if you're interested in sponsoring the tall sound podcast the donnie rich music reach out i don't out know where it us. came from we're talking donnie to you rich. wealthy investor yes you wealthy <laughs> investor uh reach out to us and we will gladly hawk whatever product you were selling <laughs> well you know what oscar we've been podcasting here for quite a few minutes so why don't we take a break and yes. look at a couple of these beautiful old vintage commercials and uh we'll also also uh we want to remind you guys again when we come back about our about our eclipse special so we'll be right back Back with the Tulsa Sound Podcast. We're so glad that you tuned in with us this week here to Tulsa Sound Podcast. And as always, I want to thank my co-host Man, here, it's been Oscar. Informative. I want to thank Britt, who was here reading our yes. good stuff Prepare. and getting all those dates going down. And of course, you know, remember, friends, if uh, you get the chance this week, get out, see some of these shows, and uh, support the local music. Absolutely, support Absolutely. it. Get support out there, it. go out and check out the good folks at Park Grove for their May Day celebration. Yeah, check out ZZ Top. ZZ Tulsa Top. Theater, man, get you some. Yeah, we've got nothing but good things to say. Tulsa Farmers sounds getting market. better and better. Farmers, Farmers markets, markets out there open booming. It. Get out there and get some fresh veggies. Yeah, and sure. uh, I think in uh, I think our next show, uh, who who's oh who? on the next episode of the Tulsa Sound podcast, we have a special guest, Jeremiah Kirby. Jeremiah Kirby's going to be here. The Tulsa Sound you and Mafia. Say, you heard his name many times. Jeremiah. Now the Kirby. amazing Jeremiah uh, Kirby. He's a composer. He's a he's singer. A composer. He's a songwriter. A he's a guitar player. A he's a keyboard player. A keyboard player. Um, he is he's a, a He's an Aries. He's an Aries. So he's and a fire sign and a good guy all around. <laughs> Jeremiah Kirby will Jeremiah be with Kirby us. Jeremiah Kirby will be joining next us time next time on the Tulsa Sound Podcast. So on we want Tulsa you guys Sound to podcast. tune in and we will talk to you later. This all right. has been the. I'm Oscar Padron. I'm Mr. Eric. All Tulsa right. Sound Podcast. Tulsa Sound Podcast. Woo!